This afternoon is the third time Dr. Amaru Maruatona will be presenting at an API Days conference. And I can assure you that we are in for a treat. Whilst traditionally he has delivered very technical presentations, this afternoon we're hearing the story of building his own company, Aculus. Aculus is an organisation focused on enabling businesses to fully utilise technology in a secure manner, applying artificial intelligence to secure APIs. Omaru is the CEO of Aculus. He is a cybersecurity and machine learning practitioner and has recently worked with banks in Australia to develop a machine learning fraud detection algorithm. I was having a wonderful chat with Amaro yesterday. He, uh, he uh, was incredibly encouraging and suggested that in a few years, it might even be me standing up here and talking to you all about my own company journey. So I'm gonna be listening very closely, but it gives me great pleasure to welcome to our stage, Dr. Amaru Maruatona. Thank you, thank you, um, Rebecca, for that. Um, I hope everyone can see my screen. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get straight into it. Um, yeah, so my name is Omaru Maruatona. Um, I'm the CEO and founder of Iculus. Uh, as, as, as Rebecca said, this is the, the, the third time I'm, I'm speaking at API Days and you know, it's always a great pleasure to, 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 to be here. I decided that, you know, this year I would, you know, talk about something slightly different. Um, and, and, and so, you know, I thought, you know, why not talk about exactly what the API, the so-called API economy is, is, is powering. And for me, a good use case for that is the fact that, you know, I, I, I studied Iculus off the back of what was happening with um, with APIs. So, you know, really what I want to, what I want you guys to take out of this, this, this um, presentation is, you know, how vibrant the, the, the API economy has been. You know, the ecosystem has allowed us to formulate an idea around API security, to, you know, not just that, but to, to get this idea um, seen as something that was valuable for, 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 for businesses, but also to attract, you know, a significant investment from, um, from a VC firm. So to give you a bit of context around how, you know, Iculus came about, started in 2017, um, at the time, I was a consultant um, at a big four uh, consulting firm, PwC Australia. Um, had a really good job as a, as a cybersecurity consultant, you know. Um, but what I used to do as well at PwC was thought leadership. You know, we would occasionally publish articles about what was happening in the in the ecosystem, the trends that we thought were coming, and how we in turn could um, help our, our, our customers to be prepared or to to better leverage the changes that were coming. Um, and so <clears throat> being there, there was there, there was a persistent, you know, theme around open digital platforms, about um, APIs. But also, you know, in Australia, um, there was also, you know, CDR, customer consumer data rights. In Europe, there was talk of, you know, open banking. And underneath all of this large and, and massive uh, legislative initiatives was the fact that, there was going to be a whole lot of data being shared, a whole lot of systems being allowed to, to communicate with each other. So, you know, I looked at that a bit more initially with just interest, you know, just to understand what was happening. But over time, I was realizing that, you know, there, there was more focus on the technology and the functionality, uh, but maybe less focus on how all of that technology was going to be secured. And so, you know, having been a, a consultant for, for a number of years at PwC and having been, you know, a hands-on security engineer with a, with a large um, um, financial services company, a global company, I kind of got the security part of it. Um, I had, you know, exposure to what different businesses, organizations in, in Australia were doing security-wise through my, my consulting job. Uh, but I had also been exposed to, you know, uh, you know, research and development and commercialization, which is how I got my 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 PhD and you know, also machine learning and AI. So I kind of had experience in in different 
ingredients that I thought, you know what, I'm in a, I'm in a good position to, to see if this gap, meaning uh, the security part of, of APIs, I'm in a good position to see if this is something I can help, um, you know, fulfill. So that was the, the, the beginning of ITLUS. The next step was to, you know, to do a bit more research, to quantify whether what I was reading was really, you know, a problem that I could take to, to the next level. So I did a bit more research and, um, you know, the numbers were, were supportive of my, my hypothesis, you know. Obviously what I have on screen now is, is the latest numbers, but at the time those numbers were slightly lower, but it was still a good enough, you know, signal that something had to be done. You know, currently 83% of, of internet traffic um, involves the use of APIs. You know, um, between from 2015 to, to this year, the growth, the adoption, the, 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 the take up of, of APIs has increased fourfold, you know, and, and to me that says, you know, this is kind of a good area to be in if, if you are a business. Um, but also if you look at the flip side, um, there's a company called Verizon. Verizon is a cybersecurity company but they also publish um, 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 annual reports on, on data breaches. And for a few years running, Verizon were reporting that companies were losing around um, $2 million from, from data breaches. And the last two years or so, they have been adding that what's increasing, um, what, what's happening is, those breaches are even more, the, the losses are even more if those breaches are API related, just because of what, you know, businesses are using the APIs to do. APIs are becoming very critical to, to businesses. They form part of, you know, a business critical infrastructure. So therefore, you know, the story was sort of really coming into play and to think that, you know, cybersecurity as a, as a, as a, as a market has been growing steadily you know, currently at 150 billion. So to me, you know, looking at a very good area to be in, um, in terms of a uh, business and an idea, you know, I thought, you know, combining cybersecurity, being in APIs with a very strong relevance in, in FinTech and having our technology powered by you know, AI, I, I thought that was a good enough story. I thought, you know, those numbers were, were a good enough indicator to, to then, you know, go forth and, 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 and launch this company. You know, that was the idea, that was the theory. And then, you know, there was, there came a time to, to, to get into practice. And that's when we started, you know, hitting obstacle after obstacle after obstacle. And, um, you know, not all of the obstacles we face were, you know, entirely bad. Some of those we needed to have, there were lessons that we needed to learn. Um, but typically when you're starting a, a, a cybersecurity company and it's a small company um, and you want to sell your product to large companies, large organizations, the number one problem is you're too small, you know, and the smallness could be you don't have a big enough team to support, you know, to really look after that big organization. Uh, it could also be the risk uh, component, you know, associated with your product. Meaning, you know, if if something happens and your your product screws up things, we have a lot more to lose than you, right? And then there's always the question of credibility. You know, um, who else is using this um, this product? Where has it been proven before? Um, you know, and then with 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 some of the the the, the organizations we we're, we're looking to to sell to to do, to do trials with, there's always the TRM, the, the the third party risk management process, which is a you know a very hefty set of requirements that you know a, a third party needs to have uh, before they can do business with that with that company. Um, and so, you know, the, the first few years after we had, the first few months after we had um, the, the MVP, the, 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 the minimal, minimal viable product, um, you know, there were lots of challenges, lots of obstacles. But over time, you know, you, you, the, the good thing about, you know, being in a startup is 
very soon you learn that you're getting you get more problems um in general than you do have successes particularly in the early days so you know the mentality for me over time was okay well how do we you know every everyone had an opinion and an idea about why they couldn't use the product and so i started taking those you know apprehensiveness and and whatever the feedback was to really improve the product to really improve you know the standing of the company and there were a few things that i really think helped us to 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 power forward to be in a position where we are now uh, and i've listed some of them um on the screen there but a, a big one a key one was uh relationships you know understanding that every business every company that we want to use our product um they're not just buying from you know it's not a business buying um a, a commodity from another business it is people buying from another person you know our stakeholders are people therefore you know forging relationships uh, you know it was something that you know i should have known as a, as a consultant but for some reason you know the agency the the desperation to want to sell you you sort of forget some of the the basics and so we we shifted a little bit from you know here's the product it's good for you blah 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 to just relationships understanding you know what the the customer's pain was right and then the other thing was differentiation most times the the, the businesses we're trying to sell to do have an existing product um uh, related or, or somewhat aligning to what we were doing um so we had to really work hard and differentiate what it is that our product could do that somebody else or, or some other product that you know a lot of this business has had could not do um so it's very very important to 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 really have that strong differentiation not just padded up and 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 made up because if they don't at the end of the day we were asking for our product to be proven so it didn't make sense to to claim things that our product couldn't do because it was going to be found out anyway so that was important um having references was 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 so sort of important and also a big challenge you know because a reference is a customer who's used your product and can happily say hey you know this thing works we got great value out of it so that was another very very difficult thing to to to, to have and without a relationship I, i don't see how that could come about um but importantly you know we were in a in, a, in an area where if we were not solving a business pain if we were not providing value to the business there, there was no way we could, could get go anywhere near where we are now so over time you know we we refined our story we really started to work on the feedback we were getting but also understanding that you know some of that feedback we got was not just to to put us down but to help really build a strong case about any size organization that we thought could use um could use the product you know another important thing as well was was runway you know it's one thing to say you know there's this much money coming into apis and it's growing at this rate but at the end of the day the, you know the question is how much of that money is really coming into iclis's account you know and and it's one thing to start a business off the back of really good statistics about the vibrancy of 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 the market but it's another thing to get some of that money to come into your business so we were finding that runway was going to be very 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 uh critical uh not just you know for for our own upkeep but for for the survival of the business um for us to keep a team of technologists that could help deliver the product you know we needed to incentivize them give them a reason to show up every day and and spend the day with us and and help us really address the problem we were seeking to 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 solve and therefore that requires cash you know you you can't have a very good developer show up day in day out and and not you know help them sustain themselves you know pay their bills and and, and things like that but also customer service that was key you know to to realize that you know saving a customer also involves cost it involves you know spending money i remember one day we 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 had a very good prospect in sydney 
um, you know, they put together their security and, and, and API team. And so they were in Sydney and they asked us to, to come and, and, and talk to, to the team and really look at how we could take things forward. Very, very good meeting. So I left Melbourne in the morning thinking, you know, I'd do the meeting at 10 and then be back to Melbourne before the end of the day. So I got to Sydney early in the morning, got on a taxi and while on a taxi to go to, to the customer side, that's when I checked my emails and I realized, you know, our stakeholder and our contact at, at this company had sent an email saying, you know, can we move the meeting to, to the next day? <laughs> Which is so disheartening because I'm on the taxi, I'm going to the meeting and I was thinking that it was going to be you know, go in, spend an hour and a half with, with these guys, really solidify the deal and, and fly back to Melbourne, only to find that the meeting had been cancelled and it was moved to the following day, you know. So without a bit extra in, in the business account, you know, that could have been just such a bad outcome. Fortunately, there there was that little bit and, and, and this is what undermines, you know, really undermines the importance of, of, of a runway, being able to maybe stretch a little further than, than, than you thought it would take to, to get the company to, to take off. And so in the end, you know, typically businesses choose between bootstrapping or, or getting a venture capital to fund the business. What I've learned so far is, you know, without a very, very, very good compelling um, story about you know the size of the market the the the, the perception of, of the product by 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 potential customers it's hard to get vc funding and so for 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 a short period of time uh we had to speak to bootstrapping and to do this we, we were consulting essentially consulting in you know cyber security consulting we did some jobs in in ai and machine learning and what i was learning was that it was you know, there are disadvantages to bootstrapping because it, essentially it, you have to divide your time between consulting and what the company is about, which is API security. So every time you spend consulting is time you're taking away from advancing the, you know, the product side of the business. But there were learnings too, which would help us, you know, even refine and, 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 and you know, take the business to the next level in, in general. You know, after two years of bootstrapping, we had built a very strong case, which allowed us to then, you know, go to venture capitalists and say, you know, this is this is Iculus, this is what we do. And, you know, that was super critical. The other thing that really, really helped us was, you know, events, um, which I guess is my other point of learning was, you know, understanding what's happening in the market is very important. Um, you know, incidents and events, as much as they are undesirable, you know, they help to really bring the message home when you're talking to, to, to customers, right? You know, imagine selling a product that is meant to be a security product and there is not one incident that you could talk about to say, you know, this product is, this product is important because this thing happened. And, you know, this is a real problem. So for us, you know, we, we've leveraged events and, and incidents so, 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 so much, you know, and not just negative incidents and events, even really good developments like a company, you know, scaling their, you know, API portfolio, a company increasing their, um, you know, API technology team. That's That's good enough to know because it really helps to, you know, to bring home the fact that, you know, something is happening with APIs. They are the, the technology of the future and, and there's something that a business needs to, you know, to be looking into. So, you know, this, this is another thing that we really leaned into that we really, you know, really, really took advantage of to, to you know, to build that strong case for, for, for Iculus to, 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 to get investment. Um, so, you know, in conclusion, what I really wanted to, to share was, you know, the, the API economy is, is, it's been good to us uh, to an extent that we, we have funded our company because of what's happening in, 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 um, in APIs. But I guess my, my takeaways are not just about 
studying an API security company. I, I guess it's more studying any company um, is, you know, do do this, this, this five things I have there. There's more obviously, but I just came up with that, what I think are, are, are the, the top five for, for Oculus and for API security currently. Um, it's important to really know the numbers, know the research, know the size of the market, you know, understand the market caps and who, who has what, who's doing what. Um, and also to look at obstacles as, you know, they, they're not always detrimental. They, they can be a very important um, learning tool. And, you know, what I learned through iClis was it would have been different if I had gone to a CISO at any company and said, hey, I, I'm thinking about studying a company or I'm thinking about you know, providing a service to, to your organization, what do you think that service could be? I felt like if there's a specific, you know, if there's a specific ask, in which case we're saying, you know, we have a security, API security product. This is how we think it can help your business. The feedback is also going to be very specific. You know, we don't need this um, service currently, or this is not a, a pain for us currently, or, it's not a big enough problem for us to warrant spending, you know, however much, right? So having those numbers, uh, sorry, getting that feedback was, was was very important for us. Credibility was was another one, you know, um, understanding that, you know, every claim that we made was going to be cross-checked, um, you know, and another incident was when we went to another big company, we had traveled, you know, from the CBD you know, got into a, an Uber and, you know, quite a fair bit way out of town. They are a big company. And, you know, we're talking to to, to this group of technolo- technology um, um, specialists and they asked who else was using the product or trialing the product. And we gave them a name and, you know, I could see somebody as we were having the meeting, you know, texting or you know, emailing someone at, at that company, I presume they were on their phone contacting someone. And I just remember thinking, huh, just as well, I gave them something real, you know, because that's what helps to build credibility. Had I just made it up and they were going to get in touch and what I said was not going, you know, if, if what I said had not been confirmed, you know, that doesn't help the company. So that credibility is very, very important as well. Uh, but also thinking about runway, that's, that's, you know, super important. Runway, especially for the team, you know, um, if you're going to build a product or, or put together a team, you know, they, everybody needs to have a sense of purpose of why they're there. But also it shouldn't come at an additional burden to, to those people. So looking after your team, uh, you know, is, is very important. And, and cash is, you know, the number one thing. Um, I mean, being in startups, you, you, you do meet a lot of people who, you know, you know, for right or wrong reasons will claim that money is not, it's not important, cash is not important to them, but I, I, I think it is because at the end of the day, you know, you, you cannot afford to spend days where, you know, your, your, your bills are not being taken care of. You know, I, I, I found that one of the biggest pain, one of the things that caused me to lose sleep uh, as a CEO of, of, of a company was when we did have the team, um, being able to pay every every team member was, was important. And then, you know, keeping the final one is keeping up to date with what's happening, you know, both the, the negative incidents, some company being, you know, having their APIs compromised, but understanding how that compromise you know, helps or does not help your product. It's, it's, it's very important. With APIs, I remember there was a time where when the, the, the Cambridge Analytica um, and Facebook um, story was, was just coming out, you know, just wanting, I remember spending a lot of time really wanting to understand, you know, what really happened here. You know, we, we understand that Cambridge Analytica was using an API to get data from Facebook you know, that's, that's fine. But, you know, they were allowed to, 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 to get the data, you know, trying to drill down to, you know, really 
what could have Facebook done better? You know, obviously APIs were used to, to, to harvest the data. You know, there was an agreement between the two parties, but, you know, where, where, is, the, where is the incident here? Where is what went wrong? You know, drilling down to that and then framing it in the context that, you know, yes, there was authorizations, there were agreements, but had this been in place, maybe the extent of the damage couldn't have gone gone that far. You know, it's it's very important to to really use those incidents to say, in some cases, it, it all looks normal and good, but it helps to have these little indicators that can maybe just trigger an alarm to say, hey, this looks okay, but can somebody just take another look at this and and maybe had there been something like that, it could have been better. So, you know, those are those are my learnings um, in terms of running, um, studying and, and scaling um, uh, an API security company. And just for context, the reason why I think this is worth sharing is, you know, we started with the basic hypothesis about what we thought was happening with APIs, where we thought the market was headed. And where we are now is, you know, we've been able to build you know, a strong use case and 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 get an investment, seed investment of around a million dollars uh, from a venture capital company. To me, looking back, you know, if we did not have the data behind us to support what we were doing, if we did not have those customer references, if we hadn't built the relationships we've built in, in the ecosystem, including with, um, you know, API days, like I said, Third time speaking, um, these are very important relationships to have. And I think that's what it takes to 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 get to 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 where we are. It's you know, really working those different variables um has been has been super important. And you know, that's what I wanted to share. That's that's all I had. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Omaru. That was I uh, uh, Oh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, great, great. Uh, yeah, fantastic story. And I I, um, I, I loved hearing about all, all the, some of the learnings that you've had along the way. Uh, keen to see if anyone has any questions, please do send them through. Uh, but I've got one in the meantime. Uh, just in terms of, of balance for, for you, how did you... Uh, I, I guess manage that balance around your passion for the technology and the product that you wanted to develop, plus managing the business and ensuring, as you say, that that you could maintain the costs and and, um, and ensure that you you had the funding and, and keep everything going. <laughs> you mean balancing the different, you know, um, 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 things that we had to deal with. Yeah, in, in I guess in your own time, how did you ensure that you dedicated the right amount of time to, to various activities, looking at the business holistically and, and then looking at, at the, the product and, and technical excellence piece. Yeah. As, yeah. Yeah. For me, the balance was between consulting and because the, 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 the business is a product business, right? We have a product. This is what the product does. And we had to get people to help build the product. Um, and therefore, you know, those people who were building the product had to be paid. You know, there had to be a way to get them to show up every day and continue building, right? But there was also uh, customer acquisition on the product side, which is find potential users for the product, find people who could trial and potentially pay for, <clears throat> for, for using the product. But on the flip side, there was also getting the revenue. So we had to, um, to pay for all of this, you know, the trips to Sydney and, and wherever. So balancing consulting and, and, and the actual product was, was the bigger part of, you know, juggling the two. Because as I said, with consulting, it could be consulting on a security strategy piece, which may not have nothing to do with APIs. Um, you know, consulting on the AI piece, which we had, it was um, a company that, wanted to implement AI for something totally unrelated to APIs. So to me, that was the biggest, you know, source of juggling things, which is why all of a sudden a day is not enough, you know, so <laughs> you spend your days, you know, full on. And, and I guess for me, you know, time management, energy management, making sure that I was productive every 
single day was was quite important but also taking time to just switch off and you know just chill and and, and act like act like there's no no work to be done and wait for monday and, and get back to it again that was the bigger piece yeah good good i've got one last question for you uh, from Saul. Um, he's asked, uh, have you any thoughts on delivering products as software as a service versus more traditional models? Yes, yeah, so so with our product, we're finding that large enterprises prefer to have the product on-prem, right? Uh, but smaller, medium enterprises absolutely want the product as a SaaS, uh, software as a service. So we do have what we call flexi deployment, meaning, you know, if you prefer the product as an on-prem deployment, then it can be deployed that way. But also if you're already cloud native and all of your apps are in the cloud, then, you know, definitely comfortable with, with delivering it that way. So, and that's the flexibility that we've had to, to have to say, not everybody's going to want, you know, this one size fits all model. So we really had to be versatile about that. Fantastic. All right, that brings us to the end of the session. So Dr. Amaru, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure to, to meet with you and to listen today. Cool, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I hope I can be back for, for number four next year. <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs>